So we're going to take this 33 year old original seat and turn it from this into this. Holy smokes guys, the workshop is getting overrun hardcore with projects. But never fear, we're going to continue on with the four wheeler. These are some plastics for a, for a rice burner that I picked up. We're going to have to uh, do a little bit of repair on those, but we'll do that probably in an upcoming, upcoming video. Somebody got a little uh, excited with it, might have been hot dog in it or something. So. But the first thing we got to do is we got we got to get the cover off. So those white strips underneath, that's actually some aluminum that I put on there years ago to try to help fix that cracked plastic. But I think if we don't end up getting new plastics for this, I think I might try my hand at doing some plastic welding and just see how good we can do with that. So now we just got it down to a seat pan and original cover. And the directions say, it came with some great directions too. I'll show you those here in a second. But it says to remove all the staples along the seat. And if you guys have been following along with this build, you'll know that what I do is uh, when I take something apart, I put it in a Ziploc baggie and uh, try to label everything so I don't get fouled up and confused of what goes where. And I take a bunch of pictures too. Now there's all kinds of ways you could do this. You could remove these staples with a screwdriver, but um, I prefer to use like a three-in-one tool. And you guys see me using this for everything. Uh, I use this to clean weld spatter. It just I use it for all kinds of tasks in the workshop, and it's got a little like pointy end on it. And this seemed to like work really good for pulling out the staples in this. So um, that's what I'm using. That in combination with a uh, pair of needle nose pliers, it seemed to work really well. All right, now we got all the staples out. Now we just gotta pull the old cover off. So the directions call for a high density foam, and I have some of that right here. I picked it up at a, uh, our local store. It's just $1.69, it's cheap. So I'm gonna put a straight line across here, and then I'll measure back in equal distance, cut this section out, and maybe just make it a square block. I haven't decided if I'm gonna go all the way across, maybe just all the way, and then replace this high density foam in that section. This seat cover came with some directions, so that's pretty much what they say to do. Uh, you need quilting bat, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, they say electric carving knife, but I don't have one. Some two inch uh, high density foam, and some contact cement, and I've got the spray on tight. I'm gonna use this as a straight edge reference. So we'll cut something like something like that, I guess, along that line. That way it kind of gets rid of this little bad bad spot there. So all this is is a wood cutting saw, and this couldn't have worked any better if I wanted it to. It was super easy and it's super accurate. And that's kind of what you're going for when you're trying to patch in this foam. You just want to make nice straight uh, square cuts so that when you go to put your replacement foam in, it fits real nice and tight. And then to cover the damage, I'll come up, I'll make a mark at five and a half inches. And we'll draw another horizontal line across there. Probably didn't have to go all the way across. Maybe we'll just go, just take out this section here. So in hindsight, I did not have to go all the way across when I cut that. 
but uh, it doesn't really matter and it didn't matter it didn't change a thing because all I did in that uh, where I cut where I didn't need to is I just filled that you'll see here in a little bit I just filled that in with some contact cement and then it se sealed it back up contact cement is crazy strong stuff if you've, if you've never worked with it it works well if you use it properly and we'll talk about that here in a minute so there's our area that we've scarfed out this will start making a lot of sense here in a minute here where I went over all we're going to do is just put some contact cement in there and that'll bond that back together and uh, so time now to cut out our new piece of high density foam to fit in our patch so here all I'm doing is transferring my measurements uh, from the actual cutout onto our new piece of foam and I'm making the I'm making the new piece of foam about an eighth of an inch bigger than the cutout now here I'm using an angle finder because I want the top of that foam to fit real snug and tight up into our recessed cutout that we made. I'm just trying to make sure that everything fits real tight. I'm trying to do a nice neat job and make sure that we don't have any gaps anymore. Alright so we got our piece cut so it all fits and I put just this line right here just as a reference because now we need to do some uh, spray adhesive and you do uh, both sides you have to do this piece and the uh, in the foam and everything so oh this is uh, middleweight bonding we want high strength bonding scrap that we're going to Walmart all right I'm back heavy duty now contact cement is great stuff if you use it the right way. The one thing I probably see a lot of people doing uh, and it doesn't work as well as it should is if you don't let both pieces cure enough. Now when you use contact cement you gotta spray an adequate amount on each side. So part A and part B each get sprayed with the contact cement and what I like to do is I like to let the component completely dry so when you touch it with your fingers it feels dry it doesn't transfer over onto your fingers when it reaches that point then you can apply pressure to both pieces and they'll bond together and you will not get them apart now here you can see I've closing up that gap I filled in uh, contact cement in that area where I overfilled it and now I'm just patching in uh, so this some little chunks here and there on the foam and what I did is I used some of the foam from the actual uh, cutout piece that we did and now you can see it's it's extra there it's sticking out further and I'm closing up that gap and now we get to put in our new patch piece now this will all make sense towards the end uh, just as long as everything fits in well and it's making good contact everywhere we can trim off all the excess afterwards which is what I'm gonna do here now I add another little piece of uh, patchwork there to fill in that little chunk and then I'm gonna just kinda rough it out with a pair of scissors just to get it uh, whittled down to size so it's easier to manipulate and use. Now the next step here wasn't in the directions it's kind of my own thing that I did and it seemed to work extremely well I'm very impressed with how it works so all I'm using here is just a four and a half inch angle grinder and I have a flap disc on it and if you do this uh, you want to be careful because it has a tendency to want to like bite it wants to pull into the work so you gotta have a real steady hand and a real light touch when you do this but boy I'll tell you it does a nice job of just uh, slowly blending that in and the surface is just as smooth as the surrounding existing foam so that's why I say it really doesn't matter especially those little patchworks that I put in there in the back where the little chunks were where I used the existing foam that stuff patched right in uh, and blended in real nice so yeah this worked this worked really well just go at it real gentle have a real light touch and here I'm just trying to shape it in take my time sight down it look it over and there you are there you have it. Look how well that blended in. So the next step calls for putting a layer of what's called batting over the seat. And I think what that is is to just help soften the transition between the actual regular seat and the seat repair part. So again, just spraying some contact cement on the seat foam and then spraying it on the batting. You can get the batting at uh, Walmart. It was like $1.50 for this 
entire piece. And now I'm just pressing it on there, uh, making it look nice so that it's smooth and it doesn't have any wrinkles, and just trimming it to fit flush. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. This is probably the easiest part of this process. Uh, the seat cover actually wasn't that bad either, so just take your time, try to do a nice, neat job. All right, guys, next day, we're back at it. All right, you know what, though? This never gets old. Yes. If you want to see how I did that, I'll put a link up above. But boy, I'll tell you what, I am loving this shop heater. Probably one of the coolest things I've done in a while. Uh, it's just nice. But anyways, let's get going on this. I'll tell you what, guys, I'm some impressed with this seat cover. It wasn't the cheapest one, that's for sure. Uh, they had some other ones that were cheaper, but in the guy's ad, he said that, uh, he said it right in there. It's gonna cost a little more than others, but uh, the quality is that much better. And I'll tell you, this feels thick, feels heavy. But what I wanna show you, one thing, look at the, uh, look at the stitching on it. How this stitching is done. It's like factory stitching. It literally looks just like the stitching that, that's on the original. I'll show you the back side of it. So, quite impressive. I mean, some time went into this, you can tell. And another thing that's real impressive is I was kind of concerned about how well the graphics would match up. Look at that. I mean, that's like identical. I'll leave a link uh, down through. I don't get any, you know, I paid for this. This is, I paid for this with my own money. I don't get any, anything for it. So, uh, if it was junk, I'd tell you. But, uh, yeah, this just looks like a nice quality nice quality one. So it says to make this easier to install, uh, he finds that putting a uh, trash bag over it uh, helps to install it. So that's what he says, that's what we're going to do. Maybe so it doesn't fetch up, I guess. That's probably why. According to the directions, we're going to put it on and we're going to have to cinch it down a few times and uh, probably do the process a couple times. And, and it says right in there, feel free to go ahead and pull it right tight and cinch it down because it'll take it. It says his is stronger than uh, the competitors, so go ahead and stretch it right out, it says. Ah, oh boy. This is going to be awesome. The key is you don't want any wrinkles in it. You look foolish, you know. And the, another key is making sure it's on straight, you know. You don't want your, you don't want it on the full, you know, on the full wheel and have it all yawed, you know. Have it like that or have it up too far or cockeyed. You don't want any of that. So all I'm doing here is I'm putting a staple at the very front and at the very back. Oh yeah, look at that guys, that's looking nice. I think the key is, is just to make sure that you pull everything evenly. That way the staple front and back keeps the seam centered and it keeps the graphic centered on the back. And then I just went around pulling the sides a little bit, trying it, put a staple in it. Just try to make sure that I'm doing it evenly on both sides and it came out great. I'm totally happy with this. This was pretty easy. Um, you saw how I was doing it, and I just kind of went through, did did a few staples here and there, and uh, I didn't have to take any staples out. Uh, maybe a couple, like just to snug it up in a couple places. And then after I knew that it was, you know, stapled every six inches or so, and the cover looked really tight on the other side, then I just went back through and just put a staple. Put a staple everywhere. Figure I, I put a double row here. Uh, just because I figured there's going to be a lot of tension. That's kind of like the, you know, the arch in the seat. So, yeah, this was super easy. And uh, look at that. I mean, that looks super awesome. Look at the graphic on the back. Yep. I'm excited about this. I can't wait to see my grandson's face when I give this to him. 
that changed the look of that uh, plastic big time. Just having that, just having that seat cover covered. You know, it looked like an old blister before, but um, you know, here's the uh, here's the old seat cover. And, you know, that just looked nasty. It'd been on there 33 years. So yeah, and this feels like a good quality heavy seat cover. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know it's not the usual uh, welding content, but it's all stuff that's got to get done. I mean, i got to get this thing done. I can't wait to see the look on my grandson's face when I give him this. I know it's not going to be for a little while, but then I've got all those fairings to do that I showed you earlier. So uh, rather than just not do a video at all, I figured I'd bring you along with me and show you kind of what I'm working on when I'm not welding. So if this is something you like, please don't forget to rate comment and subscribe if you want to find out what i'm working on before it even makes it up to youtube you guys can check me out on facebook and on instagram the links will be down below till next week guys i'll see you then stay safe see ya come, come.